We are now transitioning from what has been referred to as the most politically successful week in President Trump's administration. Now, as the 2020 election approaches, it's hard to envision an outcome in which Donald Trump is not reelected. So we will analyze the historical record as it pertains to reelection. We will examine some other numbers and trends. And yeah, basically, Trump is going to win again. There is literally no doubt in my mind. You can mark my words, and I have data uh, to back it up. So stay tuned if you want to know why. Don't stay tuned if you hate America. Like, just get out of here. You know? John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Kami. Really quick, if of course you wouldn't mind, there's this little button below the video. It looks like a bell. Go ahead and hit that button if you haven't already so that you get notified whenever I post because some of you have sent me messages saying that for whatever reason, um, YouTube hasn't been showing my videos and feeds and stuff like that. So having notifications on is just a precaution in case we ever get separated because of course that would make me less than happy. Also, we're doing another live show tomorrow night that is Thursday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time on the website at Hackoffcommy.com, so that should be fun. Everyone who signed up is going to get an email reminding them about that. You'll also be able to go back and watch it on the website archive of the live show, so all very epic, but now on to the Donald. We'll start with the reasons that I find to be a bit less interesting, moving to the ones that I think are a bit more interesting, and these aren't all of the reasons. These are just the ones that I think are the most important, so... Firstly, we'll start with the historical record. Um, so in the last hundred years, only three incumbent presidents have lost re-election. This was Herbert Hoover, Jimmy Carter, and H.W. Bush. And I'm not counting Gerald Ford because you can't really like lose re-election if you were never elected, right? Like he was in Congress, nominated to be VP by Nixon after Nixon's VP resigned, and then he became president, ended up losing to Jimmy Carter. Okay, cool. Um, so what's gonna help Trump automatically is what's referred to as the incumbent advantage. Basically, when a president is in office for a term, as long as his establishment, this new status quo, if you will, is generally okay, then he's going to win re-election. Like, people are familiar with him, they're okay with it, right. So, this tends to be what we've seen throughout history. So, why might Herbert Hoover have lost re-election? Well, short answer, the Great Depression. Oh, well, but John, you're not taking into account, relax. Remember, short answer. Um, and by the end of Jimmy Carter's administration, the country was going through the energy crisis. We had high inflation, slow economic growth. That's called stagflation. Uh, the public perception was basically that his administration was incompetent. Then with H.W. Bush, he lied about no new taxes. Remember the whole read my lips thing? And then there was the recession through the collapse of the savings and loan industry. But he was actually a generally popular guy. A lot of that is related to his foreign policy in the Gulf War plus... You know, he came in as we were winning the Cold War. Um, but towards the end of his presidency, his approval rating sank very low. Like in the summer leading up to the election, he was hovering in the 30s the whole time. And another thing to consider with these is operating independently of the incumbent, what is the opponent bringing to the table? Hoover lost to FDR, who had big plans for getting America out of the Depression, and FDR won in a landslide. Carter ran against Ronald Reagan, an even better candidate with even better plans, and he also won in a landslide. And then in 1992, H.W. was running against Bill Clinton, who was a pretty good candidate, um, and then the discrepancy between how upset the public was with the incumbent administration and how much they liked the prospective replacement wasn't great enough to manifest a landslide, but there was also the Ross Perot thing with the third party run, but ultimately it came down to Bill Clinton being a great candidate and the latter part of the Bush presidency not going too well. So we're going to get in deeper with that information in just a second, but for now, let's just focus on this. Gallup very recently pulled Trump's approval rating at 49%, which is the highest in Gallup it's ever been. They also reported that 50% of Americans believe that he deserves to be reelected. At roughly the same time in his presidency, Barack Obama was polling in the same poll at about 46 or 47 percent. Stayed in the mid 40s until a couple months before the election in 2012, and then it rose to about 50 percent, give or take a couple points. Barack Obama won against Mitt Romney in 2012, who was a terrible candidate. What was our biggest attack on Barack Obama at the time? The Affordable Care Act. Yet we decided to nominate literally the only Republican who had done something similar to that. Back when he was governor of Massachusetts, he had Romney Care. So now we have this question, and this is really the only question that matters. Do the American people think that Donald Trump has done a bad job, and do they think that whoever the Democrats nominate will do a better job? That's really the only question, because historically speaking, when the incumbent president has done a halfway decent job, and his challenger is underwhelming or even just average, the incumbent wins re-election. And now for 2020, we've got Trump, who's done a terrific job as president, competing against who? There's virtually no Democrat running right now that could beat Donald Trump, not only because of how impressive Donald Trump has been in office, but because of how forgettable and 
frankly unimpressive the Democrat candidates are. So given the way the scale is tilted right now, Trump is going to win. It's like when Reagan asked this, when he was up against Carter, the only question, are you better off now than you were four years ago? We've got six in 10 Americans, 61% saying they're better off since three years ago, which is basically the same thing given what we're talking about. And you might think, well, 61%, well, that's not that significant, but you would be wrong, sir, because in every election dating back to when the data started being collected in 1992, that figure never broke 51%. It was always 50% or less. And even with those figures, every incumbent president won re-election, except Bush Sr., but there was the whole Ross Perot thing, and he was at 50%. Trump's at 61. So even assuming a generous margin of air, history says Trump wins re-election. But here's something else that could explain that. If you look at how Americans were reporting their financial situations at the time of incumbent re-election, Bush Sr. was at 36% reporting their situation was easier, but 51% saying that it's harder. And he lost with those numbers. But Clinton won with 42% saying easier, 40% saying not easier. Bush 2 won with 41% easier, 46% not easier. Now here's where Trump is. 52% easier and 36% not easier. So of all those incumbent elections, Trump has the highest percentage of people saying their financial situation has improved and the lowest amount saying that it hasn't. We're talking about the heart of America right now. The average person does not care about all of this partisan nonsense that we care about for some reason. All they care about is putting food on the table for their families. And they're telling us that Trump has made that much easier for them to do. Also keep in mind, this is all despite the fact that Trump receives an unprecedented onslaught of nonstop vicious media coverage, but apparently America isn't buying it. That's the reality of this country. This is why Donald Trump will win. And that's sort of the summary of it, but we'll actually break it down now a bit more. And the next thing that's very important is how those in the incumbent president's party perceive him. His approval rating in the Republican Party is as high as it's ever been. It's at 94%. We're big fans of the Donald. And even some of the more, uh, you know, never Trump conservatives have come to accept the Don into their hearts. At least the more honest ones have. Because Donald Trump has turned out to be much more conservative than they had thought. He's actually the most conservative president in our lifetime. Sure, he hasn't kept 100% of his promises. We've been critical of that before on this channel. But... You know what? He's going into a second term talking about finishing the job. We love him for it. Okay, relax. And you know that because of the energy surrounding him. Have you ever been to a Trump rally? It's actually an incredible experience. I went to three of them in 2016. Now when I go to them, I cover the inexorable protest for you guys. Hey, no extra charge. You're welcome. You're very welcome. But yeah, just the other day in New Jersey, he had about 100,000 people sign up for tickets. 75,000 of them were identified voters. Over 10% of them didn't vote in 2016. Over 26% of them were Democrats. I mean, you literally can't get into a Trump rally if you don't show up like 10 hours beforehand. This is a man who has energy behind him. And do we see energy behind any of his opponents? No, like maybe Bernie, but generally no. And we'll talk more about that in a second. But that's the other thing. Over a quarter of the ticket holders were Democrats. What does that mean? Not all Democrats are as radical as the current DNC wants them to be. I mean, they're still Democrats, you know, like, hey, get your hands off my daughter, hippie. Like, you know, we're still, you know, we're in disagreement generally, but there's more uh, room to an extend an olive branch with these people than there is for these radicals that are occupying the DNC. Maybe there's hope for some of these old school JFK, even Bill Clinton, frankly, these type of Democrats like, hey, you know, come on over, come aboard the Trump train. Whatever. You know, not only is there strong Republican support, there's strong non-Republican support. His independent support is at 42%, but it gets more interesting because 60% of independents say that they're better off than they were three years ago. Why is that important? Because when Barack Obama won in 2012, only 46% of independents said that. And also, only 60% of Barack Obama's party in 2012 said that they were better off, and only 27% of the opposite party, the Republican Party, said the same thing. Conversely, Donald Trump has 60% of independents higher than Obama. 89% of his own party, higher than Obama, and 29% of the opposite party, higher than Obama, again, saying that they're better off than they were three years ago. Donald Trump wins across the board. Of the incumbent winners, he's got the highest percentage of independents reporting that since 1996 with Bill Clinton, but he still beats Clinton by 10 whole points. That is extremely significant. Could it possibly get more interesting? I think it could. I do. I think it could. We know that swing counties are important. Swing counties effectively decide elections, right? More or less. Swing counties are counties that went for Trump or Hillary in 2016 by less than 10 points. And if you look at the current data in those swing counties, Donald Trump has a 54% favorable rating and a 46% unfavorable rating. And even more interesting, his prospective competition, Bernie Sanders, is only at 36% for favorable and 60% for unfavorable. Joe Biden, 36% favorable, 61% unfavorable. Bloomberg, 
29% favorable, 57% unfavorable. You absolute fools. It's over for you again. You played yourself. No president running for re-election in post-war America has been defeated with unemployment at less than 7.4%. Donald Trump has got unemployment at record lows for minorities. Workforce participation is at record highs. We've got more jobs open than people looking for jobs, which is causing wages to rise. Plus, my guy signed into law the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act that studies have shown an average family of four earning the median annual income of $73,000 a year received a cut in federal income taxes of more than $2,000. You know, to the liberal coastal elites, that's nothing, right? That's their like Starbucks budget for a year. But to the American people, that's almost a 60% drop in their federal income tax bills. You are not us. We are middle America. Where's my hat? We are Chiefs Nation and you're San Francisco and Donald Trump is Patrick Mahomes and you guys are all dumb. You don't represent us. You're not America. I... I am Andy Reid, and you are the city of San Francisco, and Donald Trump is also Andy Reid, and we're going to crush you. Oh, we didn't even mention the Dow Jones. That's up more than 50%. S&P is also up more than 50%. NASDAQ is up more than 70%. And keep in mind, about 100 million people have 401ks. 42 million households have individual retirement accounts. They know who's putting more money in their wallets. They know who is making it easier to save for retirement, pay for college for their kids. And you know what else? You know what else they know? They know who's going to make it harder for them to do that. They know who's going to make it harder for them to help their families. They see this economy working for them. And then they see Chuck Schumer talking about how this economy is broken. All the Democrats talking about how we have to increase taxes across the board. And they're like, eh, I don't know about that one. I'm starting to think no. And that's the last question. With all of Donald Trump's success, whatever, with all of the improvement for families across the country, the question is, who could do it better? Who could take what he's offering and offer something better? The Democrats have nothing to offer except an undoing of Trump's progress. It's looking like Bernie Sanders could be the nominee. But do they think that he beats Trump? 30 years after winning the Cold War, we elect a communist. Talk about an embarrassment in the, uh, in the U.S. history textbooks. 2020 will be about an American hero versus an old commie. It will be Americanism versus socialism, literally. And I can promise you that socialism will lose. Like, sure, Bernie Sanders might not be the best Democrat candidate. He's definitely not the most likely to be Trump. But, of course, a drowning man's going to clutch at a straw, right? But it's important to note that the Democrats are going to be in trouble if he doesn't become the nominee. And the reason for that is only 53% of Sanders supporters will definitely support a Democrat candidate that is not Bernie Sanders. About 30 31% said that it depends on who, but 16% straight up said, no, only Bernie. The other candidates did not have similar results. Their supporters basically said that they're going to support any Democrat that gets nominated. So why is it that Sanders supporters have this attitude? Because his supporters are socialists. They are radicals. And according to socialist theory, it is only through the destabilization of capitalism that socialism can be implemented. So if they can't get Sanders in there, then yeah, better to have four more years of Trump and capitalism, deregulation and stuff like that than to have someone who's not a democratic socialist just slow that down. Because for some reason, they neglect to acknowledge that Trump has made things objectively better for the American people. But, you know, whatever. These are the people that are delusional enough to support Bernie Sanders, a man who has celebrated communist regimes, defended bread lines, you know, fun stuff like that. But... Of course, among the blind, a one-eyed man is king, right? But we won't have to worry about that. Don't get me wrong. You know, we got a, we got a lot to worry about. We should be uh, like an alarming amount. But whether or not Trump gets reelected is not one of those things because, you know, he's going to get reelected, like without a doubt. So rest your head because while a stumble is not ideal, it can prevent a fall. Hey, guys, if you like this video, the only way that I can know that is if you leave a thumbs up and a comment and subscribe to the channel. That is literally the only way that I'm going to know. How was your day today? You want to hear something sad? You want to hear? Go look up. Uh, there's a band called Neck Deep. It's like a pop punk band that I've been kind of getting into recently. They have this song called 1970 something. Go listen to that song. You will know when it gets too deep. You will know when the neck gets too deep. It made and then ruined my morning. It was it was just an experience. That song. Man. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching. And may God bless America.